this video kind of piggybacks off of the last video that I made, especially in like color palette and like thematically with my subject matter um, and what I was choosing to paint in this small painting. So if you haven't seen the last video, maybe check it out if you want to. And um, and I'm Rory Flint, but feel free to call me Rory. And if you're new around here, hi, hello, how are you? Feel free to let me know and do all those YouTube -y things that people like to ask you to do. I really like to create dope content and hopefully a chill atmosphere, so if that sounds good to you, feel free to stick around through this video. And if you're not new around here, hi, hello, how are you? I'm super excited to talk about this small painting. You can see currently in the video, I am very quickly, because the video is sped up, a pretty good deal. I'm um, going through the process of lining the sketch that I have done off camera um, with a colored pencil. This is a Karn Dosh Luminance pencil. Uh, it's a really pretty, like, mauve color that I enjoy using, especially for this color palette, where I'm using um, a deep saturated uh, purple, a very pale green, um, some olive green tones, and uh, I believe those are kind of in, the, like, a bit of a tealy color. And um, so I feel like the soft pink really played well with those tealy colors. <laughs> I'm also going through and kind of trying to er erase any of the graphite that's peeking through the colored pencil because the main reason that I put the colored pencil on in the first place is because I do not like the way that the gray um, graphite plays with the colors that I'm using. And especially in a piece like this, where I'm not super used to using very vibrant colors, I'm normally a very muted color person, uh, I really wanted to make sure that that graphite wasn't going to peek through and ruin everything. I think that this painting probably would have benefited from being bigger, but then again, like I've been currently venturing into larger paintings and it's not going so well, you know, like with everything that, <laughs> that you do that you try that's new, I feel like you just need time to practice and get better at it. And I'm definitely doing things that I've never done before. I'm just not doing them that well. <laughs> so I'm having to like take these paintings that are on these, uh, like 16 by 20 paper and like pull it into procreate and try and save it because i'm really just not vibing with the way that it's going traditionally and i'm pretty new to procreate and digital painting really in general i come from a graphic design background so i'm a little bit more well versed in creating flat uh, graphics and vector art and not so much much creating like raster images and actually like painting digitally but i have found found that uh, I definitely just needed to find the right brushes. So anyways, back to uh, this painting. I'm going in with this beautiful color called Sour Violet from Jasper Stardust. Um, it's the same color that I used in my last video for the uh, sketchbook page that is sitting beside this tiny painting uh, being covered up by my handmade watercolor palette. And you can just see here, this color really likes to shift. It's like sometimes brown, sometimes more red, sometimes very purple, very violety. And I was actually really enjoying the color shifting in terms of like this painting because uh, it was directly inspired by this um, fungus that looks a lot like a coral. I think it's called like antler fungus. And it's just this really beautiful flowy fungus that looks like coral growing from the bottom of the sea. And I wanted to draw a bunch of fish that like, I don't know, thought that this coral or this fungus was real coral and somehow got up to it and are now like kind of dead. <laughs> 
I just kind of, it's one of those things where I had this image in my head and I was like, well, paint it, you know, because we're like really vibing with fish right now. And I just thought it would overall be a really like sick, fun painting to try and make. I can always revisit it later. It's good practice, you know, and it was something that I really wanted to um, figure out through painting this, the new style that I have been working on. Currently in the video, I'm really working on kind of laying out flat colors, trying to figure out my values, and just see exactly how I want to go about this painting. It was also one of the first paintings that I did where I was kind of trying to have overlap, oh my god, <laughs> overlapping elements kind of in a foreground and background um, kind of way to give a, a better sense of depth and, I don't know, like reality to the piece and to, uh, I don't know, play with lighting a little bit, I guess, more in terms of just like having the things in the foreground be very, very dark and the things in farther back being a bit lighter so as to insinuate that it, it, we're kind of peeking at this frame of reference through like a, a darker hole or something like that and looking out at something a bit lighter. You're really just gonna watch me for a little bit, like go in with this very small, like four round brush from, why do I wanna say M Graham? I don't feel like that's right. No, it starts with a G. Um, I quite like their brushes. If I can remember it, I'll put it up on the screen so that way you know what I'm using. But uh, I go in with this four round brush and I'm just kind of trying to map out that coral and really figure out, well, it's not coral, the fungus, I guess. Um, and really trying to kind of figure out how dark I want to make all of the coral compared to the, um, oh my God, the fungus that is in the foreground and kind of just playing around with this color shifting paint.
It's as I go through the process of starting to add texture to this like tree root sort of thing that the fungus is growing on and the fish are laying on that the piece really starts to pull together a little bit. I start to feel a little bit more confident in what I'm doing. And I just, you know, sometimes I'm staring at all those flat colors that I lay down and I'm like, this is flat. <laughs> and it's kind of digging myself out of the, the hole that I've made using just flat colors to start. Um, and like giving myself a base to work with that it's almost like sculpting a little bit where you start to bring everything to life, round everything out, add your shadows, add more color and depth and really start to, to play with the painting. <laughs> You can also see that I am adding this olive tone. I just felt like the kind of three colors, soft pinks, this deep sour violet, and um, the kind of teal mint green color weren't really doing it for me alone. So I wanted to try this, um, adding this olive green color where it almost looked like a kind of stink that was coming off of these dead fish to see if that was something that I was going to like. And I actually do end up really liking it, but you'll definitely see me go back and forth on like, what this looks like, like how I use the olive green tone. And in the end, uh, this piece does end up looking very different from how it does right now, because I just kind of keep working it. And it's one of those things where I didn't actually overwork it. I, I kind of kept going at it until I was happy with the textures that I was dealing with. And yeah, like looking back on it, it is not the most perfect thing on the planet, but I had a lot of fun making it, very similar to the page beside it. And I feel like I was just getting a little bit closer in my traditional painting process of a place where I want to be. And I feel like with, um, you know, like the larger paintings, I just think I'm just not sure how to go about these larger paintings at the moment. I think I need to stay a little bit smaller. I'm not sure that I have brushes that are big enough to do what I want to do on larger paintings. And I almost, I feel like I would benefit from like cutting the paper that I'm using in half um, probably horizontally so that um, I could have like individual pieces that don't have to be in my sketchbook, but maybe aren't so big because I, I, the bigness is just not, like as much as I like being able to have the ability to add so much detail, I feel like I've just, I'm struggling. I think I, I jumped to, um, quickly from painting very small and being very used to that and understanding what to do to trying to paint much bigger, which is genuinely a lot more complex than I thought it would be, especially given, I guess, the way that I paint. I I'm not really sure what the struggle is at the moment. Um, hopefully I'll be able to identify it so that I can start helping myself. But from here on out, I'm probably just gonna start cutting my arches paper because like I feel like I'm wasting it on these large paintings that keep not turning out right completely like the way that I want them to and uh, pulling them into procreate which I could have just done in the first place but it's fine it's fine because I really do value traditional art and I love it I just feel like I wasted so much gouache on this last painting that I'm a little bit discouraged I'm like I don't know not to mention the $80 arches paper, but that combined with the gouache that I was using and the watercolors, and I'm just kind of like, oh, I could have just made it and procreate and probably been a bit happier. Um, and I, the, the worst part is that I had that thought from the beginning when starting this painting, which you guys will see a video on. I'm actually filming myself trying to fix it and procreate. So that will be a video and a process that you'll be able to see because I'm not only just trying to post everything right now because I'm a new YouTuber, but, uh, or I guess I should say like new creator. I, I don't even think I can consider myself a YouTuber. Um, but I'm kind of new to this creative space, um, so I want to post everything that I can, but also I know how valuable it is to show your fuck-ups and the things that don't go well, and just to um, embrace that and show other artists that everything that you make isn't what you would consider your best. And that that process and having, you know, art that you don't necessarily love is, is perfectly okay, and you kind of have to just battle the... I don't know, for me, I have to battle the feeling of feeling like I wasted those art supplies, uh, especially because I know that my art supplies isn't the cheapest. And I do have experimental art supplies that I keep around for when I'm just trying things out. But with this larger painting, I went into it pretty confident. And I, I don't know, I feel a little silly thinking that I could pull it off uh, the way that I wanted to. But I am thankful that I have Procreate and can, um, take the painting and appropriate and do what I want with it. I'm hoping that I will be able to anyways. <laughs> so going back to the process that you're actually seeing here on this small painting in my sketchbook, uh, you can see I'm kind of 
um, really trying to hone in on these textures and details. I'm going in with like a flat square brush to kind of just dry brush over top of the base that I created. I'm even going in with some gouache and trying to really help the fish stand out compared to the background because I felt like they were just blending way too much into the background, honestly, for my liking. So I'm kind of just going in with a couple different brushes, round brushes and um, like flat square brushes and a little bit of gouache and kind of doing this tug of war with value and trying to lighten the piece, but not take away from the watercolor that I've added and not trying to cover that up with gouache, just trying to make sure that my values aren't getting too muddled. Uh, it's something that I've been trying to focus on a little bit more lately. Uh, just like this whole sketchbook has been about learning and growing. So I'm trying to keep a lot of different things in mind, contrast being one of them, um, so that hopefully I can just continue to slowly improve in a lot of different ways in my art, gradually. <laughs> Per usual, adding the uh, Tombow brush pen to parts of my piece to kind of help it start to stand out from, I guess help it being like the edges of the painting stand out from each other, always helps and kind of brings a little bit of uh, cohesion to the piece that sometimes I feel like I need and I kind of throughout this inking process also notice little details that I want to enhance and try to develop further and push a little bit more uh, so inking isn't always like the final step for me hell sometimes I even pull the tape off and I'm like ah <laughs> there are still things that I need to fix and then I have to go back and fix it um, and hopefully normally they're not a part of the background but you never know <laughs> and um if that's the case, I don't retape it or anything, but it does feel a little bit less like, I don't know, nice to pull the tape off when I have to go back in and fiddle a little bit more because it's like, damn, I thought I was done and now I'm not. But you'll see that I'm trying to kind of prevent that from happening by any time that I notice something while I'm inking, just kind of picking up the brush and fixing it with some gouache and, and just trying to add or remove whatever it was that I did or didn't like. And even despite all of that fiddling, by the time that I take the uh, tape off, I still go back in with a little bit of colored pencil to add detail and kind of smooth some things out. And I don't know, I just wasn't totally happy. And I was like, okay, let's try a little bit of something. <laughs> give it some zhuzh, give it, give it um, some help because I really wanted the fish to, to stand out and, and not blend in too much, which was something I was battling throughout the entire painting. You know, contrast is a really difficult thing to get down for sure. And uh, this piece definitely helped me with that, honestly. And like, especially because I've been using Procreate so much lately, I feel like I can look at it and be like, ah, this is what I could have added and done and altered. And like, is that the danger of digital art? Just knowing that you can just go right over something with another brush and being able to fix it where in traditional, that's not really an option. Because I definitely feel like looking back at this piece, um, I knew it wasn't like the perfect and most amazing thing that I've made, but again, like I had a lot of fun making it and I'm lacking that currently in these larger paintings. And I want to just downsize again and go back to the part where I really enjoyed the paintings despite knowing that I had Procreate and could make it, I don't know, even better.
So this is my stinky fish painting. I hope that you guys enjoyed the process of me making it as much as I enjoyed the process. And um, I really appreciate it if you stuck around this long into the video. And hopefully I'll get to talk to you in the next one.